people, I would say that aquaculture is uh, growing animals and plants in the ocean. It's very similar to what we do in uh, farming on land, but in water. Well, in Canada, we farm oysters, mussels, and clams, and scallops, and fish, of course. The main fish species are Atlantic salmon and rainbow trout. Well, aquaculture is increasingly important because we have depleted so many of the world's fisheries. An increase in aquaculture, you can see that uh, there are, they have reached a 50-50 point of importance of supplying uh, seafood. I think that aquaculture, with respect to Nova Scotia economy, is extremely important for its future. Here in Nova Scotia, we have a tremendous resource with the ocean. It gives us the opportunity to develop the economy of rural Nova Scotia, which is so important because it gives an opportunity in those areas for the young people and the scientists and all the support staff necessary to run aquaculture sites. My research focuses on aquaculture at the ecosystem level and that is both on potential interaction with wild fisheries, potential interaction with other species, especially wild Atlantic salmon, and in terms of fish health, communicable diseases, those sorts of things, and then environmental impact on the bottom, the seabed, the habitat. Our, our research is really for all, for all the stakeholders, whether they're community residents or First Nations, the aquaculture industry, to make it easier for the regulators to do the regulation with greater sources of information and answers to the kinds of questions that they find it hard to address as well. So I look at how oxygen and temperature varies across aquaculture farms. Salmon breathe oxygen like most things, so it's really important to know what the oxygen levels are like in the ocean. At the end of August, beginning of September, temperatures rise in the ocean, which then decreases its capacity to hold oxygen. So with that, we get a lot of low oxygen events. The fish have trouble breathing, they get stressed out. We look at what the baseline oxygen levels are across the farm, what influences these variations to then uh, create some sort of predictor to know when these low auction events are going to occur and then the managers can respond accordingly. We are looking at salmon behavior and seeing how different environmental factors are influencing the salmon within the cages. We're looking at high water temperatures, low oxygen, larger storm events, and how these different physical attributes are affecting the stress of the fish. We're looking at their movement and trying to link movement and behavior together. And then in addition to that, we're pulling the fish out every month and looking at the physical damage to them. The hope is that if we can understand how fish are being affected now, then we'll be able to understand what we can do to mitigate any of these larger storms come in the future. Okay, so we're here in Shelburne Harbour along the south shore of Nova Scotia where we've deployed a number of buoys. And along those buoys, somewhere along a length of rope are some jars containing seaweed. And those seaweeds act like a sponge and they kind of absorb all the nutrients in Shelburne Harbour. So in Shelburne, we have four fish farms and a sewage treatment plant. And from this, we're gonna be able to map the various nutrients of all these different sources. And the idea is that this could then one day be used as a future logistically simple, easy to use, cost-effective monitoring and management tool. We're in Shelburne, Nova Scotia. I'm working at the fish farms and there's eggs feed on organic matter fall down from the cages and it doesn't fall directly down. There's water movement that can cause it to spread. So what we do is we go and we get water column and sediment samples. So we try and measure at certain distances away from the cages and around the cages to see the footprint of the waste. This is important, it helps us decide how concentrated the waste is and if it will affect the biodiversity in the environment. We can help that determine where we can put cages in the future. Yeah, my work will be looking at talking directly with uh, local residents as well as business owners, uh, fishing and uh, tourism as well. Regulators and industry have increasingly been recognizing is that engaging with local communities is increasingly more important to how we can manage for aquaculture that respects the local communities and the social concerns that they have about where we place fish farms. There's a lot of interest in understanding what aquaculture can mean both for communities and businesses and how to do that in a sustainable way and to me that's really exciting.